flying boys and girls Captain Sergei is ready to roll just need to check my load and uh, get fuel I'm gonna clean up my windshield so many bugs in here so this is a flying J which is actually not a real flying J it's just a franchise um, see even coffee here they have the they have their own mugs you know and it's not as good as the pilot <laughs> Now diesel, once again, sorry for the bugs, but diesel, if you can see in the distance, that's Highway 17 where the truck is going. $1.17 and uh, 0.9, so basically $1.18 Canadian. And luckily I only need uh, half a tank, but since my card doesn't work at many places here. I got a fuel here. And just to give you an idea, dollar seventeen. Okay, let's say dollar eighteen times three point seven eight. That's how many liters are in a gallon. That's four forty six Canadian per gallon times one point three five. Four forty six, sorry. Divided by one point three. So that's three dollars and thirty cents US per gallon. <laughs> All right, let me show you what I got. It's a drill rig I picked up at uh, Rainy Lake uh, Gold Mine, not too far from uh, Fort Francis. It looks big, but it's not too heavy. It's uh, 51,400 pounds. Uh, everything is open here. I think it's missing a cover or something, but kind of like a small excavator with a, with a boom for drilling. And I was a bit concerned that it would be um, too narrow, like the tracks, you know. But turns out it's a big one for a drill rig. Because you see, once I was loading something like this and these pieces over here were too close. So we had to put timbers in here so to make those higher and that's one way to load them, right? I have a video somewhere where I, that was done in, uh, in somewhere in Ontario too. I think it's made in Finland. Yeah, some DP1500i. Yeah. And it has these uh, over here. Eyes, but they're too small, so I had to use my shackles. I uh, use my smaller shackles in there. And based on the weight, I figured I would need uh, three pairs of chains. So I put two, two in the front, two over here. And then I needed one more, so I had to hook up like this. Tried to hook up over here, but it was too close here. I couldn't, not enough room for the, for the binder. And don't worry about the dirt, because this goes inside Canada. It's not crossing the border. So yeah, this time I'm just doing kind of like a Canada only run, so from just north of Fort Francis, Ontario, I'm following this highway, uh, what was it, 17? No, this is 11, I think. Well, they're both running together here. Towards Ottawa and then east to, um, towards uh, Quebec. And this massive boom over here. So, of course, you have to tie down everything. This thing was sticking out like this. I had to tie it down with a strap. This thing is just lying on my trailer. But it's very heavy and very inflexible. Put another strap on that one, just in case. 
And this thing, again, the same thing. I didn't want to tie down the timbers because it pushes down. You see, it's not like the one I had before. So it pushes down like this. So I put one chain and then I drove on the dirt road from the mine towards the main road and then I stopped and checked because I find it's always a good idea to check you know once you go on the dirt road from the pickup to the main road because usually it's bumpy right so the, the your trailer moves your truck moves and that's when some weak points can be revealed to you right and so I put just one chain and I flip this over there I can see there's like a lip there, so that's perfect, right? I didn't want to put it in the crack in here. And then I, I stop the truck right before I hit the main road, the pave, paved road. I go back, this thing is loose, and somehow this jumped from there and here. What the heck? And what I learned later is that this whole machine bounces up and down. There's so much weight in the back there where the engine is. And I, I was driving and I saw this thing moving up and down, you know? So I added another chain when I was in Fort Francis. So yeah, I tightened that one, of course, and then I put it another one like this. Um, so two chains now, right? Seems great. It's still <laughs> it's still was moving. So I put one more over here. Put the uh, shackles in there. Put one more, and this thing only became a good boy. Only became obedient when I did this. I put another chain in the front. I put a chain in here, and that's it. From that point on, this thing stopped moving, and it was behaving. to switch to my dash cam and then this guy pulls in and I thought I'd show you guys this looks like a Quebec uh, company because it express it uh, LG is in the back I mean JG is in the back uh, like normally they put the name of the company in the back and so but see a regular three axle truck it has a three axle Jeep and then it has a drop side rail trailer just like mine except that the drop is smaller and so this looks like a very cheap haul. He's probably going just to get something big. And in the back, it's a three axle trailer with a 16 spacing. I can see that. And he has a flip axle folded down. And under the flip axle, he has a stinger, single axle stinger. So, so when, this, when all these axles are deployed, this guy will have, what, four, five, eight, 11 axles. So he can do some pretty serious weight. And, uh, it's a Liddell Canada the trailer, rated for 60 tons. convoy passed like five minutes ago and those guys are not paid by the mile or percentage so <laughs> they drive very slow so at one point I'm gonna 
overtake them. Continue on Ontario 11 East for 68 kilometers. And I don't like this intersection at all, you know. You have to cross two uh, two sides of the freeway and people are flying by. There should be a light in here or something. Straight ahead, you might see a sign that says uh, 587 South, and just a little bit further down says 10% grade for trucks. <laughs> I definitely don't want to go there. So we're just trying to turn left in here. Might be a while. And in case somebody that's a Canada Post uh, small cup pulled up on the other side Hyundai all right now the coast is clear finally we can go yeah in case somebody likes to uh, track my movements on the map I'll tell you my briefly my route I was sitting in Dryden right after my delivery to John Deere. Monday I delivered, Tuesday they sent me a new load. So I went, I went west on 17 and then south on 71. As if I was going back to uh, Fort Francis, Ontario where I had that adventure with a $350 US uh, toll. But, some 20 miles north of Fort Francis on Highway 71, there's a mine. It's called uh, Rainy Lake Gold Mine. And that's where I picked this up and then kept going south on 71 till I uh, hit 11. 11 east to Fort Francis. And then I stayed on 11 till I went through uh, Thunder Bay. And in Thunder Bay there was a shortcut, Highway 102, that goes northeast like a little bypass. And that's it. So these are, this is, it's going to be a pretty good highway for uh, for some short while. Because these are come one. These, this is two highways in one, 17 and 11. Actually, I already see a sign that says the highways converge, like both sides, so it's going to be a two-lane highway. You see the yellow sign on the right? Divided, a road, ends. Yeah, so I thought it would be longer, but... So I did lot of, lots of kilometers today, I mean yesterday, because they, they want this uh, in Quebec Thursday. Distance from the shipper to Kansani is 1,200 miles, almost 2,000 kilometers. So it took a while to load this thing yesterday, and so I was here like 11 o'clock, just east of Thunder Bay. Sir, 
but I know some some of these spots have a lot of lot of mosquitoes. Uh, not sure how the situation is uh, near the rainy lake, but from what I've seen over the past week, that's the best spot I saw. Uh, twists 
especially when it's raining, right? Imagine there's night and it's dark, everything is glistening, your headlights are reflected from the water. <laughs> I'm telling you, especially in winter, this is one scary uh, section. Winter at night.
Lake. In 100 meters, turn right onto the Trans Canada Highway. No, it's fine, fine, fine. I go inside the truck stop, um, check for water, and there's a big sign. There's a big sign on the hot water tap, like a sign like this, covered in plastic, like a real heavy duty. It says hot water, one dollar, and then below in parentheses it says unless a purchase is made. And there's no way I'm paying one dollar for um, for hot water, so I'm smarter than that. So I paid two dollars and forty-seven cents for a butter tart. Yeah, the diet starts tomorrow. Today is an exception. So two forty-seven. So this way I go to the counter and. The girl says, uh, I said, hot water and this, so you don't charge me for hot water. She says, no, yeah, hot water now is free. <laughs> I think I saved a bunch of money. Okay, I'm finally ready to leave the Husky and Hearst. And if you look at the Canadian flag, you'll notice that the wind is coming from the left. column that uh, I saw I saw pass uh, pass lake as I was uh, getting ready to leave and then I saw them stopping in another truck stop now they're just pulling in and here a whole bunch of uh, international trucks and the guy let me the guy let me go because they need that space anyway yeah, they're parking right where I was. There's a bunch of uh, land in there. <laughs> well, at least I beat them. Because, yeah, you, if you're stuck behind those guys, it's very difficult to pass them. And this column was like, I don't know, eight trucks, ten trucks, you know? Let's go, man. 
Mr. Ford. Population, I believe, is about 6,000 people. Don't quote me. Yeah, by the way, speaking about quotes, some people reacted to my last video saying that, what are you talking about? There is information in Wikipedia about dolls. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Wikipedia is a free resource, open to everybody. Right, so when I went there, I saw there was no tolls in the main body of the story, but there were tolls on in on the right in very small print where it says statistics, and we're talking about, of course, this international bridge near Fort Francis slash International Falls, Minnesota, and so there was a toll. I just it's hard to see. So the toll rates were on the right in a small column and very tiny print under statistics. So what I did, I looked at the picture I, I took with my phone and uh, the one I used as a thumbnail for the video and I copied those rates into the main body of that story. So, so now everybody can see them and it's easy, it's easy to understand what's what. And so it was me. It was me who edited that story on Wikipedia, so you're welcome. Okay, so I left this morning from Pass Lake, which is east of Thunder Bay, with uh, full tanks, right? Because I just fueled up and then I left. And now I came here, I filled up, and I look at the number, I know what, how much I put in my tanks, right? So now we can look at the real-life scenario of what the heavy haul, well, light heavy haul fuel mileage is with a small engine. Uh, first of all, so the machine is 23.3 uh, tons or 51.4 thousand uh, pounds this uh, drilling rig so my gross weight was about uh, what 51 plus 45 96 basically 97 thousand pounds my, was my total weight and I was driving uh, as you saw a pretty slow uh, 59 miles per hour most of the time my cruise control was set to or 95 K an hour and the distance, the exact distance from Flying J number one in uh, Pass Lake to Flying J number two in Kapos Casing is 568 kilometers or 353 miles. Uh, my tanks took 240.6 liters which translates into 63.6 .6 gallons okay so we divide 353 miles by 63.6 .6, we get 5.5 .5 miles per gallon US gallon 5.5 .5. but I think it would be worse uh, but I saw you saw from the flag um, at my previous stop so the wind was blowing from the west so uh, the wind was favorable today. I think normally it would be, I'm guessing, it would be maybe 5.2, you know, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18
so the wind does help a bit but most of course like for a driver this is a ridiculous fuel mileage right uh, but you saw so many heel this there were so many heels in there uh, very healy uh, you know lots of turns right elevation you know when you drive at above sea level your fuel mileage goes down too and so 5.5 miles per gallon you know not too bad uh, this is still heavy you know 51.4 thousand pounds 23.3 metric tons and for uh, those uh, of my viewers that think in metric 5.5 miles per gallon if I translate into liters per hundred kilometers it was 42.3 uh, uh, so the truck burned 42.3 liters for each hundred kilometers of this 568 so there you go and I'll conclude this with a little uh, uh, hello to um, uh, I yesterday I learned that I have a new fan uh, it's a girl she's six years old and her name is Valentina so Valentina if you're watching uh, thanks for watching and thanks for liking my videos be cool captain Sergey out thanks for playing